News Panorama is a TV news magazine program that gives you the story behind the story. It tells the stories the way they should be told by capturing the larger scale. It deals with people's deep feelings on issues that, when brought to the fore, ultimately educates, informs, and entertains. News Panorama. Capture the larger scale. This week on News Panorama, we take a look at the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's 25,000 Naira addition to low income earners, Cross River State at 47, education, health, and many more. Welcome and thanks for joining me on the program News Panorama. I am Josephine Efanga. News Panorama. Capture the larger scale. If you have just tuned in, you are watching News Panorama. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has said that for the next six months, an average low-grade worker shall receive an additional 25,000 Naira per month. The president made this known in his nationwide broadcast as part of the program of events marking the Nigeria 63rd Independence Celebration. Esther Ikeme brings details the report. On October 1st, 2023, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in his independent speech said his administration has added 25,000 Naira to low-grade workers as part of measures to cushion the effects of the fuel subsidy removal in Nigeria. The president further stated that reform may be painful, but it is what greatness and the future require. We now carry the course of reaching a future Nigeria where the abundance and fruits of the nation are fairly shared among all not hoarded by a select and greedy few. President, who had initially raised the wage by 25,000 Naira for junior civil workers, said that the increments would enhance wages without increasing the inflation rates. Reform may be painful, but it is what greatness and the future require. We now carry the course of reaching a future Nigeria where the abundance and fruit of the nation are fairly shared among all. We are introducing a provisional wage award increment to enhance the federal minimum wage without causing undue inflation. The Cross River State Governor, Senator Basio Tsu, has shown determination to cushion the effects of petrol subsidy removal on civil and public servants, as well as to ensure judicious distribution of funds, which perhaps informed the decision to add 10,000 Naira to the civil servants during a parley with the media held to mark his 100 days in office. The special advisor to the governor on general duty, Mr. Ekbayong Akaba, while thanking the public for their patience with the government of the day, said the government's priorities are to ensure that the people are eradicated from poverty. When Nigeria is what celebrating at 63, Nigeria is also what pray for because at 63, we have had our challenges, we have had our roadblocks, we have also had our good and happy days. So it's a combination of all that 63 can make for. In terms of our ethnic groups, in terms of our regions, we should rather push unity for Nigeria to get better. At 63, the economic hardship continues in Nigeria. Workers have been lamenting the increases in the costs of living while the minimum wage remains the same. Minimum wage is the lowest wage allowed legally. This amount varies according to different countries and it is higher in advanced countries than developing countries because of the cost of living. The Nigerian government should no longer ignore the needs of the middle class, especially during this period of economic hardship. According to recent statistics from the National Bureau of Statistics, there are approximately 70 million people in the labor force. The 2023 data from the World Poverty Clock pegged the number of extremely poor Nigerians at 71 million. Others on their parts plead with the government to do more on their welfare. Ipeme Esther reporting for CRBC Panorama. Since its inception from 1976, Cross River State has evolved from one developmental stride to another. It is pertinent to X-ray the growth to determine where we are coming from and where we are right now. In this report, Idongos Lesien X-rays Cross River State at 47. 
the report. Still on Independence Day celebration of which Cross River State is not left out, Cross Riverians were assured that with the present government of Senator Prince Basil II, the people will be carried along. Cross Riverians can indeed draw inspiration from the administration's people first mantra. Hence, it is a period where governance is taken from the office to the grassroots, meeting the need of the people in their domain and the rural communities. As we celebrate the Independence Day in Cross River State, the Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Moses Usogi, and the Commissioner for Sport, Madam Agnes Atu, called on Cross Riverians to hold the flag flying, knowing that the governor is dedicated to making sure the people enjoy governance. They advised all not to talk down on the state negatively, for the pronouncements they make matters. As Nigeria celebrates, Cross River State celebrates also. And in this season of sweetness, in this People's First um, Government of uh, His Excellency, Senator Prince Bastier II, I want Cross Riverians to know that this celebration cuts across. And we have a gov government in place that makes sure that the people enjoy what is happening in Nigeria. This is a great nation. This is the giant of Africa. We remain the giant of Africa, no matter the circumstances. We will continue to lead Africa. As long as we continue to declare good things about this country, we will see good things. But if we begin to continue to speak evil, oh, things are not going well. This is, uh, oh, things are terrible. Nigeria is no longer what it used to be. We will not go anywhere. We thank God for everything that is happening to this country. Uh, Kosovo State precisely is moving forward. Is uh, you know going to better heights. Having a governor like uh, Senator Prince Basi, I don't know, as uh, the lead man, as the man at the top, uh, we are hoping with the things that are happening now. We are very sure that Kosovo State will be greater than. As 1st October is a significant day in Nigeria, the Commissioner for Finance, Mr. Michael Dere, and others noted that there is a need to celebrate, especially the strength in unity amongst us, adding that Cross River State is getting to a greater height, especially with the administration of Prince Otu. And of course, development is ongoing in the tourism sector, and more is yet to be done. It is a very, very special day, and you need to celebrate because amidst all of the challenges and all the troubles that we have got, we are still together. So the bond, that, that friendship, that brotherhood, brotherhood that keeps us together, it's, uh, it's stronger than any kind of challenge that we have faced. Cross River State has done well and, uh, in the previous administration. And uh, with the God given governor that Cross River State has today, the blessing of Senator Cross River State, to know that Cross River State will be taken to a greater height. News Panorama, Idonga Sedecian reporting. Education is the key to turn weakness into strength, providing people with considerable mental agility to make the right decisions and spring into action when needed. In this report, Lucy Efium enlightens us on the comparison of education in today's society as compared to the 80s as Nigeria celebrated 63rd independence anniversary, the report. The primary aim of education goes beyond literacy. Education aims to provide individuals with knowledge, skills and values necessary to lead productive, fulfilling lives and contribute positively to the society. Therefore, the importance of education cannot be overemphasized. It is imperative that education should be open to everyone, regardless of their gender, social class, ethnicity and race. A society's level of development is usually assessed by its level of education. Education focuses on holistic development by nurturing critical thinking, problem solving and creativity. It should also promote the development of social, emotional and ethnical capabilities, enabling individuals to be responsible citizens who can contribute positively to the society. It is erroneous to think that only those who go to school, example, acquire formal education are educated. An educated person is one whose eyes have opened to rational ways of solving his or her problems. Between 1960s and 80s, Nigerian education system was of high quality, competing favorably with other nations in the world. Within those years, teachers were respected and standards were very high, such that a standard six product had good skills for the workplace. Also, within that period, the student-teacher ratio was about 15 students to one teacher. The teacher was able to monitor the students and impacting knowledge was a lot easier. Infrastructure was adequate and this enhanced learning. The system also attracted funding from both the government and missionary institutions and discipline was also higher. 
higher among schools. Government school ran simultaneously with missionary schools. At 63, the Nigerian educational sector has been grappling with a myriad of challenges, encompassing issues as diverse as debt of educational materials, bribery, and the presence of skilled teachers. A respondent, Obong Ntiense Williams, said the country needs to be back to the curriculum of educational system to see how we can get education to improve to the lives of the children. He expresses regrets that nowadays, Nigerians only look forward to passing examinations and getting certificates, half of which are forged. Compared to the past, where students were good to go even at secondary school level, he advises that Nigerians need to go back to reorienting themselves and getting the right curriculum that will fit into Nigerian society. Most of our students, our children, they go to school, different schools, both public and you know, private schools, and at the end of the day, most of them are actually not well educated. We, we need to really go back into the curriculum of our educational system and see how we can get education to be, uh, to imply to the lives of these children. Other respondents said the educational sector in Nigeria is fraught with numerous challenges, ranging from inadequate funding and poor infrastructure to low quality teaching, insufficient training for teaching staff, non implementation of policies, corruption, and the widening gap, educational gap between urban and rural areas. The educational system of Nigeria, especially in the government schools, was like some of us prefer government school to private school. Some of us prefer private government school to private school due to they have more qualified teachers and the students there performs very well and excellently unlike now. Um, what I would love the government, especially the government of Cross River State to do is to employ more teachers. The school are currently teaching, we don't have enough teachers to teach the, the students most of the subjects. So please, the government should try as much as possible to employ more teachers. We have graduates, people who are ready to work, we have people who studied education and uh, related courses. They should provide some facilities to the schools and also update the curriculum. Very, very important, the curriculum. Education sector general in Nigeria I think, uh, has been a um, big mind and improvement actually. I mean big mind have been improvement. From the basic education aspect, I think that's where there's been a lot of big mind. Basic education, that primary education, that a lot of big mind. I think it has uh, not been given them uh, enough attention lately and I think um, the government just have to look into that aspect and get some things fixed. Generally I think the government is doing well. However, there are opportunities for improvement through increased government funding, embracing technology, quality teacher training and curriculum reform. By addressing these challenges and taking advantage of these opportunities, Nigeria can improve its educational system and provide its citizens with the skill and knowledge necessary for the country's growth and development. For CLBC News Panorama, Lucy Efium reporting. Healthcare is conventionally regarded as an important determinant in promoting the general physical, mental and social well-being of people around the world and can contribute to a significant part of a country's economy, development and industrialization when efficient. Benedita Sonny in this report enlightens us on the effectiveness of the Nigerian health sector in the face of its 63rd independence celebration, the report. There is no doubt that a country can achieve a lot when its citizens are in good health. What this means is that the development and growth of any nation depends largely on the citizens' access to healthcare services. A lot has been said about the healthcare system in Nigeria, and the question has always been on the standard of medical facilities available to the Nigerian people and how easy it is for the average Nigerian to access the health facilities. In Nigeria, the healthcare system is run by the three tiers of government. Under this arrangement, the federal government government manages secondary health care, while local governments take charge of primary health care. As Nigeria, and indeed Nigerians celebrate the nation's 63rd Independence Day, many Nigerians are wondering if the country has been able to put in place the type of medical services the people desire at this stage of nationhood. Here in Cross River State, the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Ebe Ayuk, seems to believe 
that the nation's health sector is doing well. Dr. Ayuk went on to say that the health sector in Nigeria is comparable to what is obtainable in other parts of the world. There is no country in the world that has 100% healthcare. But we will try, every country is trying to achieve the universal health coverage by taking services as close as possible to every citizen. I'm, I'm very convinced with uh, what our government is trying to do, particularly improving allocation to the health sector. We will be there one day and very, very soon. However, other Nigerians are at the opinions that the health care system in Nigeria is poorly developed with inadequate and non-functional facilities which have a lot to be desired. There has not been um, an improvement in the health sector. Like there are no much equipment in, um, in treating the people. Like for instance, when someone wants to do brain surgery, there are no equipment in the hospital to treat them. Back in the days, we had, we had some good equipment to heal the sick ones. And now these equipments are no more there in the hospital. They are talking about free, free medical checkup. In those days, we have free medical checkup for antenatal women. Now, they are no more free. I'm calling on the government to provide a good medical equipment to the hospital. Undoubtedly, if Nigerians are to get the kind of health services they desire, government at all levels must, as a matter of necessity, show a greater commitment to the health needs of a citizenry. For CRBC News Panorama, Sonny Benedicta reporting. The verification of national register has been flagged up in Okwagbo, Adebo, Migbewe, Makoko, Soboru, and Apollo villages in Lagos State by the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Dr. Beta Aidu, the report. A few days ago, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Dr. Beta Edu, flagged off the verification of the National Social Register, NSR, in Makoko and other communities in Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria, with a promise to get Nigerians a social register with integrity. The exercise commenced simultaneously across the country in line with President Bola Tinobu's renewed hope agenda and will last for three weeks. Shortly after she carried out a door-to-door -door verification of register at the remote Lagos suburb, the minister who was ferried in a canoe to the riverine villages said the federal government is ready to put money into the hands of Nigerians to assist them in their businesses, education of their children, livelihood and job creation. According to her, the exercise is an integrity test as President Bola Tinobu wants sincerity in who gets the conditional cash transfers, noting that the president wants to truly touch the lives of the poor and change things for the better. The minister stated that state governors will chair the steering committee at state levels, while the local government authorities and community leaders will be involved to get NSR with integrity. They came, they captured people in this place, one after the other, to use the right, and they wrote their names, they gave them numbers. Now we want to see the human beings that were captured on this Sunday. We will be coming back to do a targeted capturing, work with the community head to ensure that we have... A, a national social register that has integrity. The new national coordinator for the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office, NASCO, Abdulaziz Danladi, says strengthening the social safety nets and social protection system in the country is a core strategy to help end extreme poverty and promote shared prosperity. He explained that the core mandate of NASCO was to lay a strong foundation for rigorous and reliable evidence of poor and vulnerable households in Nigeria, which the minister is championing. Some community members had this to say. And we also have uh, Apollo. So generally here is Apollo. The other side is Iwaya, water fountain. But people here are not captured. Yes, sir. For helping us, God will provide to go live and protect the minister was accompanied by the Commissioner, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and IDPs, Mr. Aliyu Tijani Ahmed, and the Director General, NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi. For CRBC News Panorama, Josephine Efanga reporting. The seventh edition of the National Sports Games held in Asaba in Delta State has been concluded, with Delta State emerging as the overall winner, followed by Lagos State and Edo State taking third place. Although Koshiva came second in the swimming competition, 
Less in Basi brings details the report. The 2023 National Youth Games is a highly anticipating sporting event that brought together athletes aged 15 years and below from the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Abuja, in Asaba Delta State. Among the participating states was Team Cross River, whose young talent showcased their skill and determination in various sports events. The seventh edition of the Under-17 tournament was a testimony to the exceptional sportsmanship displayed by this promising athlete from the different states. Team Cross River's performance at the Games was nothing short of commendable, as the state director sport, Mr. Moses Ita, noted that the contingent from Cross River State excel in their respective sport, earning medals that brought pride and recognition to the state. And I believe there is much hope and more medals are coming. So far, we have won almost about 10 to 15 medals, and we still have about 10 sports. To compete. Some of the athletes expressed their dedication and hard work in competing against counterparts from other states. This is my first time of going for this competition. Like I'm feeling so anxious. I don't even know how I don't even know how this is going to be. But I'm very sure I'm going to come back with gold and silver and it's going to be great. We're going to come back victorious. Yes, and I also expect that we'll come back winning. And also I pray that God will help us and give us the strength to win and come back with cheers. It was kind of hard with the people I swam with because they are bigger and they were too small. I managed to come first to my head. Other heads said the team's unwavering commitment to make their state proud was evident throughout the competition. We were thanking the governor too for making it possible for us to attend this year's edition of the uh, uh, under 15 national youth games in Asaba. Uh, we are so thankful to the governor. May God bless him. Listen to your coaches. The more you listen to them, the sky is your limit. I charge the athletes to have the spirit of resilience to be committed to what they are doing. I have charged them that they should win this game so that they will move the state forward. Those ones that have not qualified, those ones that have not gotten gold medals should be encouraged that this is not the end of the road. There's still another opportunity for them to shine. Of course, success does not come easily. We are so happy for Team Cross River. Team Cross River will actually make them proud at the end of this game. Our players did so well. They played to instruction. And most of them, this is their first time in the youth games. And as a coach, this is my first time too in the youth games. Thank God we came out dead with the bronze medal. The next youth games, by the grace of God, will come back with the gold medal. The 2023 National Youth Games featured a diverse range of sports, including judo, swimming, boxing, karate, athletic, gymnastics, handball, cricket, and many more. As the eight days event unfolded, Team Delta emerged as overall winner with Lagos and Edo Fulin closely behind. Team Cross River returned home with a total of 15 medals, a remarkable achievement that highlights the talent and potential of young athletes in the state. Their performance serves as an inspiration for the youth of Cross River and a reminder of the importance of nurturing and supporting sporting talent at the grassroots. We want to thank the Senate of Our state government for giving us this opportunity to participate in the seventh edition of the National Youth Games that hosted in Asaba Delta State. We also have to thank our Commissioner for Sports, Honorable Mrs. and the Nazi for giving us the opportunity to enable men contributing to our welfare, not forgetting our Director of Sports, our Head of Department, they also contributed their quota, not forgetting our athletes also, they contributed. They won the medals which was from their achievements and all that that made us came and we did something that we must in the spirit of celebrating independence, we turn our attention to the voices of public workers who provide a unique perspective on what this annual commemoration signifies to them. Blessing Bass again on this report went round to sample opinions on the significance of the celebration and the reflections on the current state of the affairs of the nation. The report. 
in commemoration of the 2023 Independence Day celebration. Public workers have engaged in an exercise of reflection to explore the significance of this historic occasion and to share their thoughts on the current state of affairs in the country. Independence Day holds a specific place in our nation's history, symbolizing the hard-fought freedom that our ancestors secured for many public workers. This day serves as a reminder of the sacrifice made for the nation's sovereignty and the responsibilities they bear in upholding democratic values. From my perspective, are very simple. Nigeria is going to, Nigeria is going to be a great nation. Uh, headed by a visionary leader, a man who has focus, a man who knows tomorrow from even now. He's not God, but already his projection shows that Nigeria is going to be great. The country should move from this height to a better height. During this celebration, public workers from various sectors came together to express their sentiments about the current state of affairs in the country. Their feelings were mixed as some expressed optimism and pride in the process made over the years, citing advancement in education, health care and infrastructure. However, other voiced concern about ongoing challenges such as economic disparities, political instability and environmental issues. Now, what I know is that we are optimistic that the country will be better. What the bad boss will tell the children that the water, the water that is hot now is not, not going to be permanent, it's going to be cool. So everybody should add to, you know, a kind of bear what is going on because of the uh, subsidy remover. There are so many palliative, there are so many measures on ground to push on that effect. These discussions highlight the diversity of perspectives among public workers and the importance of open dialogue in addressing pressing national issues. In conclusion, the reflection of public workers during Independence Day celebration offers a glimpse into the complex feeling and viewpoints that exist within the nation. While there is cause for celebration and pride in the country's achievement, there are also significant challenges that require collective attention and effort. This exercise underscores the vital role that public workers play in shaping the future of the country and the need for continued dialogue, cooperation and commitment to building a better, more inclusive nation for all citizens. For CRBC News Panorama, Blessing Basi reporting. That is all we have on our lineup this week. We hope to be back same time next week. I am Josephine Efanga.